I am Dr. Swati Kumar. I am going to speak on uh, recent advances in dry eye diagnosis. As we all know that dry eye syndrome is the most difficult uh, condition to diagnose in an OPD setting and we tend to over-diagnose and sometimes under-diagnose it. And it is the biggest challenge in research which is uh, coming up recently with lots of research being done. And what we are basically doing is just grading the dry eye into mild, mild, moderate, severe, doing different tests in the OPD uh, to find out the grading of uh, the dry eyes with a slit lamp analysis, doing a T-bud, fluorescein, rose bengal. And these are the routine uh, examinations that we do with the lysamine green to stain the conjunctiva, a shoulder testing. But more recently, uh, lots of tools have come up and um, I'm going to discuss a little bit uh, um, about each one of them. And first, and the most important uh, tool which has come up recently is a tear osmolarity test. And as we all, all know that in dry eyes, the tears become the uh, hyperosmolar. So it's a gold standard for an objective dry eye and is the best single marker of disease severity. Here we have a tear lab osmolarity system which can measure the osmolarity and the composition of the tear in the fluid sample. It basically converts the numeric data which helps in understanding of the disease level and it helps in monitoring the patient's response to the treatment. So if we have a normal uh, osmolarity and if we get a color change or uh, it can grade or it can, it can tell you about the numeric data, so it helps in how much osmolar are our tears and how well is our therapy. This is, um, uh, this is a, a, a simple method to evaluate the appearance, volume and the stability of the tear film with a Keeler tearoscope. So this is a handheld system which collects about 50 nanoliters of the tear sample. It is placed adjacent to the inferior uh, lateral tear film meniscus and it, um, it, the, it absorbs the tear into the into it a system by a capillary action. It is usually helpful in mild to moderate dry eye and uh, there's a lot of vapor pressure osmometer which is available but it, it requires a very large sample and thus it makes it a little impractical. So the only disadvantage we see with this hyperosmolarity system is that it can diagnose dry eye only dry eye with its, when it's very severe. It cannot tell you the reason why the patient has dry eye and cannot differentiate between an aqueous uh, deficient and an evaporative dry eye. Impression cytology, as we all know, it uh, he helps in telling uh, the presence of inflammation. It's a very simple technique that we can do with the cellular uh, assisted filters in an OPD uh, setting. There's no discomfort to the patient. And it also helps in diagnosing, other than dry eye, the oculus of his diseases, um, keratoconjunctivitis sicca, the neoplasias, and other oculus of his infections. This is a very rapid RPS inflammatory detector and uh, it, it helps in measuring the elevated MMP levels, not exactly objectively, but uh, they, the, the marker turns from, um, from blue to red and if there's a lot of inflammation, it takes about um, 10 minutes of time and a red line means an MMP9 is present, which is again a detector for inflammation. There's another a digital imaging system which has come up and as we can, we can all see that it can tell you the tear meniscus height and you can measure the tear meniscus height thus knowing about the aqueous deficient dry eye. Confocal scanning or the laser um, uh, scanning which is commonly done in other cases, it is of quite uh, help to know the extent of the disease by degree of in immune cell infiltration or epithelial cell integrity. So as we can see in these images that if you have a mild, mild to moderate or a very severe dry, you would see a lot of inflammatory cells in the cornea and um, uh, these uh, cells are little uh, dendritic, they're kind of a dendritic cell infiltration which, uh, which are present mostly at the nerve endings. Another very um, uh, important test is a phenol red thread tear test. You can see the yellow uh, threads there. And if it is fast, it's a less irritative and very precise method. It, it, it basically indicates the pH. And when it is moistened by tears, these threads from yellow, they change to light red. And this reflects the amount of tears in the conjunctival cul-de-sac. There's a real-time coronal OCT, which is also um, helpful. It's easily repeatable, non-invasive imaging technique, images can be easily understandable and assessment of tear meniscus after application of punctal plugs 
also. Tear meniscus height can be measured and uh, if we, uh, we can also know the, uh, the, we all know that dry eye patients, the tear meniscus height is reduced and uh, we can measure these tear meniscus height before and after punctal plunk occlusions and thus know about it a treatment. It does not tell us about the tear meniscus volume and um, other uh, disorders which lead, lead to dry eye. There's another tear protein analysis or a lactoferrin. These are the uh, tears are collected by a micro uh, capillary tubes and the concentration of uh, lactoferrin sorry, is analyzed by the ELISA reader and it measures the lysozyme contained within tears. Normally the 20 to 40 percent of the total protein content of the tear film and it is reduced in aqueous deficient dry eye. The last uh, is the molecular marker for the dry eye. As we all know that uh, diadenosine uh, polyphosphates which are available in the these are the intrinsic components of the tears, especially 3A and 4A, and uh, they help in object, they are the objective methods of examination and a reliable diagnostic tool for the dry eye. Thank you.